Hello everyone, in this video we'll be solving this problem that came in AITS. So it's a very good problem. So it's a problem involving the concepts of EMI and rotation. So let's start reading. So we have two conducting rods, OM and ON, each of mass M and length, and they rotate about the center of the ring O with its other end sliding smoothly on a circular conducting ring, as shown in the figure. A constant and uniform magnetic field B acts into the plane of the ring. At t equal to zero, rod rod ON is given an angular velocity of omega naught. So just this rod is given an angular velocity of omega naught. So we have to assume that the space is gravity free and there is no and there is electrical contact between the ring and the rod. The resistance of the ring is negligible and each rod is having resistance R. There is a small gap in the ring between P and Q so that the current flows along a unique path. So assume that the time to rotate one complete revolution is infinite. So basically it takes a lot of time to complete a revolution. So the reason why there is a small gap here is to make sure that there is no current flowing in this loop. Induced current will only flow along in this loop. So we have to find the angular velocity of this second rod OM as a function of time. And we also have to determine the heat produced in the system. As there are resistances here, there will be heat losses involved, right? Let's begin with the solution. Let's just try to understand the problem. So initially, this rod ON is given an angular velocity of omega naught. What's going to happen? So the flux that is re that was related to this sector will start increasing, right? Why? Because the, because the area associated with this sector is going to increase. Okay, so now and therefore there will be an induced current evolving uh, because of the increase in flux and the current will be induced in such a way to oppose the increase in flux. As we know the magnetic field is into the plane and the flux is increasing. So the, so the magnetic field evolved because of the induced current must be out of the plane. Right? And if, so if the electric flux due to the induced current should be in the outward direction, the induced current must be in the anti-clockwise direction, right? So the current must flow along in this direction. So when a current I flows through this rod OM, now this rod OM is a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. So there will be a force associated it. So the force acting on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field is I times DL cross B. If you do a DL cross B, you'll get the direction to be perpendicular to the rod in this direction. And similarly, if you do I DL cross B here, you'll get the direction of ILB force in this direction. So as you can see, this ILB force will have a torque about O which is going to increase its angular velocity and it's going to decrease the angular velocity of the rod ON. So why is it doing that? It is to make sure that this dA by dt becomes zero finally so that the change in flux becomes zero. Okay, so let's just start with the solution. So let's say at some general time the angular velocity of this rod ON is omega 1 and at some general time the angular velocity of rod OM is omega 2. So we have to find omega 2. So let's write the flux associated with the sector ONM. So that is going to be the magnetic field B multiplied by the area of the sector which is half the radius squared which is L in this case times theta. So the induced EMF will be uh, the modulus of d phi by dt that is going to be PL squared by 2 times d theta by dt. So where theta is this particular angle. Now, as we took, now d theta by dt is the increase in this angle theta, which would be equal to omega 1 minus omega 2. So a final expression for the induced EMF would be BL squared by 2 times omega 1 minus omega 2. Okay, now what will be the direction of induced EMF? So we just determined that the current has to flow along the anti-clockwise sense. So the, which means the polarity of the cell will be something like this. Now both the resistances of both the rods are given to be R. So the current I would be equal to E induced divided by 2R because the two resistances are in series. So finally it's going to be BL squared divided by 4R times omega 1 minus omega 2. There will be a force of magnitude ILB acting on this rod uh, at its midpoint and similarly there will be an ILB force in the upper rod as well. Now if you observe, uh, if you take the rod ON and OM as a system, you can see the net torque about the origin is zero, right? So as the net torque about the origin is zero for the system, we can conserve the angular momentum. So initially the angular momentum was I omega naught and at any general time t it is I omega 1 plus I omega 2. So from here we'll get our first equation 
omega naught equals omega one plus omega two. Now we have to find omega two as a function of time. So let's just write the torque equation for the rod OM. So if we draw the FBD of the rod OM, it's, it should be something like this. So the, so the force ILB acts on the center of the rod. If I write the tau equal to I alpha equation of the rod OM, so the torque about O will be ILB times the L by two, and that will be equal to I times alpha. So from here, we'll get the alpha of rod two. And d alpha is simply d omega two by dt. So now we can eliminate omega one by writing it as omega naught minus omega two. And after that, we just have to separate the variables and integrate it on both sides to finally get the omega as a function of time to be this. Now, if you see carefully, after a very long time, or if you tend t to infinity, this term would tend to zero and omega two and omega two will is tending to omega naught by two, which means omega one will also tend to omega naught by two. So, uh, so after a very long time, both the rods have the same angular velocity of omega naught by two. So what will happen is there is no flux change associated with this loop anymore and the current induced would be would become zero. So now we have to find the heat produced by the system. Now for that, well, there are two methods. One method is to just directly integrate uh, integrate the heat dissipated through the resistors. It should be I square times 2R times dt because the net resistance is 2R, right? So, so now you just have to integrate it from zero to infinity and I we determined earlier. So from that, you'll get the answer. So from that, you'll get the answer to be ML square omega naught by 24. But the easier method to find the heat is just, so as there is no external agents doing any work, so the, we can just find the change in kinetic energy of the system. So the initial kinetic energy was half I omega naught square. And finally, both the rods have a kinetic energy of half I omega naught by two whole square. If you find the difference, you'll get the heat dissipated through the resistor. So that was it for this problem. If you guys have any doubt, comment down below. And thanks for watching, guys.